Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. This is Daniel Harms, film analyst here on another Wednesday Film Room Edition. Before we get into it, let's make sure we hit that like, hit the bell, and the sub notification. Please, the like really helps us get out to the rest of Chiefs Kingdom, and then obviously the other two are for your guys' benefit, so you get everything that we do on a weekly and daily basis here on the channel. So please, make sure you do that. Now, this has been one of the most anticipated and probably more... more polarizing picks and not maybe not picks but signings and chiefs kingdom has really been wanting these film reviews and these talks about wide receiver justin ross out of clemson he was really slated to be a top prospect before a myriad of injuries came through and they don't just stop at college they went all the way back into his time at high school he had an mcl sprain an acl tear and then obviously he had multiple he actually had a hip issue in 2019 while he was dominating the 2020 he had his spinal fusion corrective surgery and last year a foot fracture so there is a laundry list of problems that he's had to deal with in his young career and that made him stay in college much longer than he should have had to endure. But we're here. He is now a Kansas City Chief for the time being. Is he going to make the roster? What's going to happen? But before we do that, I want to just say that I actually had him as a fourth round pick before this was all said and done, even with the, the injury issues and the offensive shortcomings that were... In Clemson, his final year, there was a lot of structural problems. The offense wasn't well executed, terrible quarterback play. So there was a lot going along, going wrong in his last season at Clemson. More than likely contributed to him not having the most productive or the most fun season. But let's go ahead and jump into his film because I think that the best way to really go about this is to look at what he did in 2019 a little bit of what he was able to do over the course of his career with Trevor Lawrence, very important, but also remember what he did last year. Look at what he did last year and see it. what is there to improve upon. Is his game limit? Was his game limited by the injuries? Like that's a valid question. He had injuries every every year he played in college. So let's see what he what he does, what he does best, things that translate regardless of injury status. So the very first thing that we are going to talk about is his manipulation tactics. He's lined up here in the slot down at the bottom of your screen. One of the places he lined up the most in his college career that I saw lots of slot play, but that, that, that happens with a lot of bigger slot guys that don't necessarily have the size, or excuse me, the speed and acceleration to always play on the outside. They do kind of get pegged into the slot at times, but manipulation one thing I want you to notice is that this corner is playing with outside leverage. So his body is turned mostly to the sideline. If, if he were closer to the inside, turned the opposite direction, he would have kind of the sideline as his friend and be able to use it to his advantage. But you open yourself up to the middle. It gives the receiver a little bit more of a leeway. So Ross does an excellent job here of understanding that that's what he wants to do is have that outside leverage. He has a great instinct and ability to manipulate this corner into overcorrection right there, forces him to come back to the inside. And when he does all of that, he moves right back straight. First off, not just going from inside to outside. It's a jab step back to acceleration. So you're moving the corner this way and then this way instead of just boom boom because then he has a better chance of recovering if he's able to id exactly where you're trying to go instead of just accelerating to the upfield position it's a, it's a lot easier for ross to create separation that way because as you're going to see as we do the full speed he goes jab accelerate and then break look at all the separation he creates boom it's a great catch against the sideline it's a great manip manipulation tactic you can carry over into the nfl and don't forget this was his rookie season or excuse me his um freshman season i think yeah because this was the 2019 national championship so this was in his 2018 season he was a he was a freshman at this time so Lots of uh, lots of tape out here to, to, to talk about with Justin Ross. Where, and then now he's lined up on the outside, and look at him, be just a physically dominating dude. Seeing the inside of that 
whole field all to himself. He had the speed to break away right there. And granted, like most taller athletes, it's build-up speed. He needs a little bit of a, a, a you know, a, a runway to get going. And when you get up to that speed, then it's harder for them to, to catch you. But there's no one there. But again, hand usage. Swipe. The corner's trying to get hands on him, but he just throws him to the side. Ends up throwing him down. Ends up being the strong dude. He takes that safety who is taking a really bad, really bad angle here. Look at look at the catch. First of all, you're closing in. You're stopping. He's got all of the space. Like, there's not much you can do. <laughs> you can you have to kind of understand that you're playing the over the top instead of the middle. You'd have a better chance of running him down if you played inside. He didn't do that, and Ross kind of sees that when he comes down. He accelerates through the middle, and then boom, he's gone. So. It's a great understanding, again, of the feel itself, but just throwing that corner off of him with his, with his inside hand, using the swipe to his advantage. I think he has very good hand usage for a, a big receiver, a guy who's going to need to create separation if he plays on the outside in the NFL. But he's not just, you know, a lot of hand usage and manipulation. He's got some really good ball skills as well. He sees... I think he sees the field and the ball exceptionally well, but he's a, a more using some more manipulation tactics again to his advantage, moving the corner from outside to inside, and then again acceleration and break off to the side. We're using we're seeing the same kind of route that he ran in that first clip, but he now he's using it to catch the ball at the sideline. Like this one's at the sideline. This is all ball skills, hand eye coordination, ball tracking. Those are the things that he does at an elite level, but he did an elite level in 2000, uh, 2018 in his freshman season and 2019, this national championship game or leading up to, this is actually a one handed catch. He just kind of stabs his, his right hand out there. If you can see, it's an excellent kind of reminder that these guys are exceptional athletes. They have great hand eye coordination, just not even just for regular people, like the elite of on top of the elite kind of reactionary times to just kind of stick their hand out there and come down with the ball. He doesn't, it was not a complete NFL catch as we know, getting that one foot down in college is still legal. I wonder if in the next couple of years, they're going to change that to, to make it a little bit easier for the, the transition process, but we don't necessarily see an issue with that coming from college to the NFL. I think they, they practice it more, more than enough. Uh, but here, he's back on the outside. This is his next season with Trevor Lawrence, 2019, his, his 2019 season. So he's on the outside. If you notice in the first three or four clips that we've seen now, he's been three out of the four on the outside. Was a lot of where he lined up in with Trevor Lawrence. So we're going to see a little bit things different with in 2021. But he's going to run and out and up. And I apologize about the jankiness of this video. Uh, rendering did not do a great job. But he does an excellent job, one, of breaking down, selling the out route with his head all facing towards the sideline. The corner instinctually comes down because he sees an out route, creates some contact, and then Ross feels it and accelerates upfield. He does create separation and inaccurate throw forces him to come back to the football and he's un unable to really get back. I wish he would have done a little bit more to come back to it and be a little bit more physical right here. He sees it coming. He just kind of waits a little too long in my opinion. And um, it was an inaccurate ball forcing him to have to come back. I think if Lawrence can get that ball down the field a little bit more, Ross catches that. Maybe he breaks away for a touchdown. We won't really know. Don't know, but maybe we see it in a Kansas City Chiefs uniform with Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball down the sideline instead. Maybe it's a little bit more accurate. Fit it in between that corner and the safety. I'd like to see that. But, again, a good job selling that route to the out and then up portion of it, creating that separation, and then, unfortunately, unable to come back to the football. I do think that he's got some room to grow as a, we'll say a route runner, but more of a separation creator because he's got some limitations as that type of player in my personal opinion and we're going to see that in his 2021 tape which we're about to get into this is against north carolina state and he is in the slot okay this is going to become a pretty big proponent of what he's seen doing in 2021 he played a lot of snaps in the slot that i saw and 
he just wasn't able to really create a ton of separation. Like he's he gets the target there, but he he doesn't have the strength to push this guy off. He doesn't do an excellent job of really manipulating him. He tries the jab step to the outside, and he does the swim. And then right here, the route's not great because it's just a curl route, and you have that corner in your hip pocket. It's hard to create separation. I would like to see them do maybe more of a a vertical stem, and then he breaks to the inside instead of just having it be a, a curl. But really, with a curl, you need to sell vertically, okay? And when you're trying to to move this corner, he does it a little bit too much. He he does a little bit too much work here with the the breaking down, and then there's not much acceleration afterward. It's easy for the corner to stay in that hip pocket and break on the football and make an incomplete pass. So. Yes, is it a great um, showcase of his ability? No, it's a it's a bad route and where he should be running more of a an underneath coming out. But the simple fact of the matter is that that burst out of his stance, I'd like to see a little more speed variance on his part because while he does manipulate well, I think you even saw it in that clip with the jab step to the outside, the corner does push that way. But the reacceleration after is where I have some I have some my own personal issues because he doesn't have a lot of space limiting acceleration and speed. So corners can kind of sit on that a little bit. And that's part of the the problem with being some of these bigger guys that don't have that elite speed. We can't just keep comparing people to Calvin Johnson. That's just not going to happen. These big guys that don't have that kind of speed, they're not going to be those kind of separators. So just kind of remember when you're watching him that he's not a speed guy. And back to the slot. Justin Ross again pegged in the slot with Clemson's play. Oh, my bad. I did it again. So he's actually in the reduced split. The reduced split. My apologies. Adaptation is a great use of ability, okay? After the initial play breaks down, he's also an excellent finder of space. He gets gets open. We've seen that be a huge benefit in this offense after Patrick Mahomes gets out of the pocket. When you're able to find space, get downfield, because the quarterback has the arm strength to do it, you just find space. And that's something that Justin Ross does very well. He did that with Trevor Lawrence. He does it now with DJ. I can't pronounce his last name. I, I apologize. I'm still working on it. Been a while. Been trying to get it for a while. But again, the linebacker here is going to get to his depth and feel his coverage spot. And Justin Ross does a good job here. At this point where the, the, the contact is coming, he dips at the hips and sinks his shoulders being able to adjust what you're doing given the circumstance but still accelerate through your route is very, very, very important, especially in the NFL because they're going to try to body you up. They're going to try to make you make a play through contact. That's what defenses want to do. So his ability to adapt on the move and be able to sink those hips, get the shoulders down and through his route are very important to succeed in the air, something that is hugely needed in today's NFL to carry and catch through the through contact and at the catch point in those spots. So really good feel for the sideline, really good feel for the end zone where he needs to be to get his feet down and obviously great hands at the point of attack. I believe he's up here. Sometimes it's a little harder to see. Oh no, never mind. He's down here. He's in the slot. Again, in the slot. Works from the slot a ton in this offense in 2021. So He's got, I'm interested to see what Kansas City ends up doing with him because he's, and, and he's not going to get the, you know, the, the play here. He's not going to get the, uh, the look, but watch his head, okay? He uses it twice. He has some really excellent head usage in his routes. He might not be the most fluid player, but watch right here. He, he kind of shimmies, uses his head right here. He looks to the outside really sells that he could be coming around here and the corner could have to go with him. He sells it excellently. So I really like, oh geez, I really like to see him using his head inside and outside of his routes because if you can sell a route with your head, your body type, your body positioning and everything like that, in the, even in college, it transitions into the NFL very well. And I think that he's going to be able to Utilize that to, again, expand his route tree and get open in the NFL. So a great job here of doing that. Just kind of slips at the, the top of his route. No big deal. 
things that, all, that can all be snap encouraged snap on a snap to snap basis you slip every once in a while so justin ross is a very intriguing prospect we all know that he's got the big body he has that x frame is he gonna be the player that he was before we don't really know we're gonna have to wait and find out but we've seen the, the clips out of camp he doesn't drop the ball he has great catch radius he can do all of the ball skill things that really has been lacking in kansas city over the last three years with patrick mahomes forcing to have to throw the ball into coverage to tyree kill and making him make Really, really great plays that he's made sometimes and other times he hasn't. So I think that the Chiefs are looking stylistically in a different direction with how they, they want their receivers. Sky Moore brought in huge hands, doesn't drop anything. I think outside of MVS and McCole Hardman, the, the wide receiver core is going to be much more in good hands, pun intended. So I hope you guys enjoyed this film review. What I want to hear from you guys is what you think. Give me your six-man wide receiver roster right now in in at the beginning of June. I want to hear the six receivers you think are going to make the roster in the exact order that they're going to be. So I want you to be the number one receiver all the way down through the sixth guy. I want to hear it from you guys first. We'll talk about it later on the channel in the comment section. Please, if you're new, make sure you hit that like and the bell and the sub notification. Helps us, helps you, and it helps everybody everybody that is trying to find more content to consume for Kansas City Chiefs Kingdom. This is Daniel Harms once again, hoping you guys have a great day and I hope you enjoyed the film review. We have more coming every single week here. Tomorrow, don't forget to tune into that Chief in the North with Seth and with Ryan. They'll have the Rogue Head Huddle maybe on Friday or Saturday. We'll figure that out going forward, but you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.